This news is funded by viewers like you. Please support our work at democracynow.org slash give. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. We spend the rest of the hour with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's niece, a Providence College political science professor and Middle East expert. This month, she was one of the signatories to a letter from Jewish and Israeli residents of Rhode Island that asks the state's federal delegation to support ceasefire in Gaza. In March, Ruth Ben Artsy spoke out about distancing herself from all contact with the prime minister's family. When asked by the Israeli newspaper Haaretz why she chose to speak out, she said, quote, "The answer is that I'm ashamed, sad and angry, ashamed that my relatives have no shame, that they're in a position of power that promotes and encourages violence, racism, nationalism and fascism. These are not the Jewish values I absorbed and to which I feel connected." Israel could remain a country in which Jews find a safe and free haven of equality and partnership with all the population groups within the state's borders. Well, Professor Ruth Ben Artsy joins us now, again, a Providence College political science professor and Middle East expert. She's an Israeli and U.S. citizen. We welcome you to Democracy Now! Thank you so much for being with us. Um, your voice has so much power, because you are the prime minister's niece. Can you speak directly to him, to the people of Palestine and Israel and the world, about what you want to see happen right now, Ruth Benartzi? Um, so, I, first of all, speak as an Israeli citizen, as an American citizen, as a person who is observing everything that is happening, with my experience having grown up in Israel. Um, and also as a political scientist who studies and, and researches says that these uh, issues for many, many years now. Um, from those, from all of those different perspectives, um, I come to this realization or, or that we came to this decision that, that um, uh, a ceasefire is really the only way that any uh, solution can ever be achieved. Um, I think that any, uh, the, the the continued violence that begets violence that begets violence uh, is only going to bring us further away from a solution to the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. Uh, and it, you know, it's really important to remember that we've been hearing also from policymakers, from American policymakers, and even from Israeli policymakers, military experts, that there is no military solution for the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and if there's no military solution to the conflict, there's no military way to eradicate Hamas uh, as well. The more harm that we're inflicting, the more violence that is occurring. Uh, whatever anybody wants to. Um, uh, as a backdrop to either justify it or to explain it, uh, does not make sense for the future. It only brings us further away from finding that solution, from being able to move towards that political solution. And it's clear that the day that this war is over is going to be the day that a political solution is going to have to, uh, to start to be implemented. Uh, the uh, occupation, uh, the season in the, in the uh, West Bank, the siege in Gaza that have that happened until October seventh. All of these um, kind of what we typically call status quo, or we traditionally call status quo, but it's not really status quo because things are changing. People are ch the population is changing, the demographics are changing, the the the, uh, um, the infrastructure is changing over all of these years of occupation. That can't. Uh, continue the management of the conflict that has been the policy of the Israeli government, uh, at least since 2009, isn't it, it was never going to work, uh, and it has no long term, uh, no long term prospects. I, the, the ceasefire is the only. We're seeing the numbers of of innocent civilians um, uh, who are caught in the crossfires. The number of those who are uh, who are victims uh, of of this war uh, grow every single minute. Uh, and that is, uh, in addition to the humanitarian, uh, to the, all the humanitarian concerns that, and, and the experts that you had on the show before me, uh, in, uh, um, the legal concerns, in addition to that, that also brings us further away from being able to implement the kinds of policies that we need to implement the day after the war. And Professor Benakti, you've also, uh, uh, like many, of course, expressed concern 
about the well-being of the hostages who are in Gaza still, about 240 of them. If you could talk about how you think a ceasefire might make it possible uh, for their safe return. I mean, they, uh, it was just reported uh, that Israel and Hamas appear close to an agreement whereby 50 uh, women and children, Israeli uh, civilians, would be released in return for 50 uh, Palestinian uh, women and children uh, prisoners being freed. So if you could talk about the, the impact a ceasefire may have on uh, the release of the Israeli civilian hostages in Gaza. Right. So in Jewish tradition, um, we have uh, we have a tradition that is called Pidyon Shvuim, which means that uh, the release of the hostages comes first and at all costs. Uh, and that is to, to save lives. Uh, the, the, the bombing of Gaza, th those hostages are in Gaza. When Gaza is being bombed, when we are, when we don't know where those hostages are, it puts them in danger too. There is going to be a day uh, when already there's come a judgment for Hamas and for those who have inflicted the horrible violence on Israel on October 7th. But right now the focus has to be uh, the release of those hostages. And the, the, the bombing that is, is, is clearly not very um, uh, specifically targeted and is, is putting those hostages in harm's way uh, is only exacerbating the situation and putting the, I think, is putting the, and not just myself, but including uh, the Rhode Islanders uh, who signed this letter. I've also joined uh, hundreds of political scientists who signed a letter to uh, to, to demand uh, immediate ceasefire um, for, for some of those same strategic reasons, humanitarian reasons, and also for the, the what is up for me in the in the front of my mind, the um, release of the hostages. Um, we buried today of these activists who was murdered on October 7th, um, who was um, who had spent decades uh, in activism trying to um, to um, help to bring a solution to the Israeli-Palestinian uh, conflict and uh, continuing that tradition. There's Israelis who are continuing that tradition. There's Israelis in Israel now and abroad. There's organizations, both Palestinian and Jewish organizations, that are working towards that solution to find a peaceful solution uh, and to bring the hostages back. Uh, we have to to have those negotiations, and if the negotiations have to, they have to happen with the group, uh, with the terrorist group that is holding those hostages. There's no other way. There's no other. Uh, there's no other solution uh, for this. Get the hostages uh out. This is what the, the, the hostages are demanding, and then uh, we can continue uh, the 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 political work of rehabilitating Gaza, removing Hamas um, from power, and finding a political solution, which is really the only way that the roughly 7 million Jews and 7 million Palestinians who live between the river and the sea will ever be able to find peace. Uh, Professor Ben Arzi, we just have 30 seconds, but as the niece of uh, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, have the two senators from Rhode Island spoken to you, Jack Reed and Sheldon Whitehouse, or Seth Magaziner and uh, Gabe Amo, the Congress members? Um, as Rhode Islanders, we speak to our delegation all the time. Uh, our group uh, that signed this letter and that sent them this letter um, spoke to our delegation. We're in contact all the time. We have a, a, um, a, a various uh, connections uh, in our small state. And I think that uh, we have a listening ear to all the different voices well, uh, that are heard. We have to leave it there. We thank you so much, Providence College political science professor Ruth Benartzi, niece of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. I'm Amy Goodman, and Nermi Sheikh. Democracy Now! is funded by viewers like you. Please give today at democracynow.org/give.